when it comes to commercial investing, it's it's a completely different animal. And hopefully, I can explain to you guys a little bit about why that is. Um, what? Why we're again investing commercial, and we want to start dabbling into it. It's simply because the reality is, it's just more money. But more risks involved, right? So again, we're just looking at the idea of saying, well, what does money give us? The ability to not have to work for it. The ability to relax and the ability for me to coach my son's t-ball team. Right? Uh, so what we're talking about with investment and invest, well, we were talking about great ways to invest before. Commercial is also one of those. So I don't want to leave it out. And So, <laughs> this slide here, obviously it's the exact same slide as before. The difference with commercial is that we're talking about a whole lot more. Like I said, a whole lot more risk, a whole lot more. So I want to do a bit of a case study here. Four Street. Okay, this came to us, a uh, realtor in Toronto. He owns it. Correct? It's client owns it. Okay, it's client owns it. So I, I, I'm not the agent. Off market deal, technically for the time being still, $377,000. It's a sixplex in Amherst. Okay. It's located right pretty much in the core of Amherstburg and of course it's rather have to leave, but the reality is in Amherstburg, that's a, that's a good location, it's a nice safe location, it's in, it, it's a good neighbor. It's a great blue okay. collar, if you want a blue or white collar, it's a great blue collar. If you look at the inside pictures, no, it's not completely red away, but it's a good, you know, it's clean, it's, it's, it can sustain itself, I guess, if you, if you want to say. And the sentence are all long term. So, the idea being that, you know, we had this rental ROI calculator ahead of time before for our residential. What do we do when it comes to commercial, right? So the idea behind when it comes to commercial, how you evaluate it is your net operating income divided by the cap rate, right? That's equal to value. Your cap rate is essentially, you know, the percentage of money that you make if you did not use any lenders. If you fund the deal entirely yourself, what's the percentage of return you get it? Uh, your NOI is essentially your net operating income, which is all its value that you, all the income is coming in minus all of the actual um, expenses you have. This is what he sent us. Okay? Don't look at the, the insurance numbers and the law strength, but what he told us is hey, this is the rent that's coming in right now, a year. Minus 2% vacancy, which you would argue is right now that makes sense for Windsor, but it's not a good stress test, right? And then here's all of his expenses. Well, what's lacking in there is specifically, well, where's your, ma where's your management costs, right? Who's running, who's, who's running this? So I don't want to run this, right? This is commercial, I don't want to run this. So this is our spreadsheet. Yes, a lot more com uh, complex. You may not be able to see the details exactly, but what we've added to it was at the moment we put a 4% vacancy. And we could probably push it up a little bit more if we wanted to. We put four percent vacancy. I also put an eight percent management fee, right? And we went looking through things and like, are these numbers realistic on his numbers? And what would our numbers be? So we tried to, you know, this is what we think it makes sense. We came up. This is before we even go look at the property. We came up with a net operating income of twenty-one thousand. His was twenty-seven thousand. We feel that it's really creating an income of twenty-one thousand dollars a year. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Because if we look at it, if we're purchasing at three hundred seventy-seven thousand, and we're making twenty-one thousand dollars, twenty-one thousand dollars a year, what that is is a cap rate of five point seven two. Okay, that's you know, Amherstburg's between a five and a half to a seven. That's not bad. We feel that the rents are a little on the low side, the property could use some maintenance. So having a low cap is not a big deal, right? Because we can we can raise the rents. Here is the kicker, okay? So the numbers made sense. We said, the reason why we didn't take this deal was because, I'm sorry, I don't have $377,000. I need to bring a lender in. So I'm gonna get a bank involved. And the banks, we always put them at, they're gonna give us 65% of the, of the value they're gonna be at about 4% interest rate. And once that's all said and done, the amount of money we're actually making is $5,000 on this property. On a year, $5,000 a year. On a 300,000, maybe it was about, I think maybe it was about $7,000, something like that. 
Uh, on a three hundred seventy-seven thousand uh, dollar deal, that gave us a cash on cash return, which means that if you want to invest with me, this is the amount of money you're going to get right away that I'll be able to pay you back. Two point seven two percent. No, hold on. We can we can get with we can get away with eight percent, seven percent, but we also include equity in the deal, right? But are you willing to go at two point seven two percent? A little lower. So, so it doesn't make so much sense. Now I'm going to explain to you why this deal still makes sense, but not for everybody. Right? And it wasn't for us, but we can appreciate why it made sense for many other investors. Okay? So what we did is said, all right, well, this is a five-year plan. Right? We saw that the rents were a little on the low side. Why? Because the properties were also starting to be a little dated. So if over time we started to keep improving the properties as we went along in a five-year plan, we could probably increase those properties, uh, the rents by 30%. If we increase the rent by 30% and we tweaked our numbers and they said like our management cost, we figured, hey, we'll get better properties for you. And we'll lower the management cost to maybe 7.5%. Not a big change, but we, you know, we're able to negotiate and get some quality out of there. We'll sell it, it was selling us, I told you 5.72. We'll sell it at six cap, six cap, assuming. So what happens is that when we when we increased our rent by 30%, you know, looked at what we expect this house, to, this property to be providing us in five years from now. Our, the money that comes in before having to pay the bank increased from $21,000 a year to $33,000 a year, right? Now, you could argue it's a little less than that, a little more than that, it all depends on your scenario. We just did this in the office before we went and even looked at the property, right? So you're gonna do your diligence after. Doing that at thirty-three thousand dollars divided by six cap, the value just jumped up from three hundred seventy-seven thousand to five hundred fifty-three thousand. So that's a capital gains of one hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. We just made one hundred sixty-six. Now I'm not including realtor fees in this here and there, so there's definitely some additional fees that you would have to go through. This is a very crude example. This would be if we bought it off market. Uh, and sold it off market which too, right? that agent was willing to let it go for his client. But it's, that's also selling off market too, so I'm not accounting for rental fees yeah. selling. But there's some, there's definitely some fees to account for. Even if you, even if you account for about forty thousand dollars of fees or seventy thousand dollars of fees, you'll see it still makes a sense. Yeah, it deal. still makes sense. Now, in addition to that, what kind of rental gains were there? Okay, there was a hundred thirty-six thousand dollars of rental gains occurring over those five years. Now, we did have to pay the bank, right? We had a mortgage on it. Now, I'm not gonna consider the principal that we pay because when we sell, we get that back. But we had some interest, so we paid over five years almost $70,000 in interest. When you count that, we just made 234,000. That's why I said if we all of a sudden had $75,000 of fees because of you know unexpected expenses uh, that we had to do, upgrades, or even in that case there, realtor fees, closing fees, all that stuff, right? We still now made 150,000 instead of 234. What kind of return on our investment does that create? The original investment in this case here was 35% because the bank was covering 65. 35% of 377, which was 141,000. That's what somebody had to put in, 141. You just made 234. Your ROI over five years is 160%. And your annual rate of return is 21.55%. So you who didn't want to invest this at 2.72 just lost out on 21.55%. Right? You can argue, and rightfully so, that the number is probably going to be closer to 15% because some fees that we missed out here. That was just a crude real quick. Right? But the reality is that's what commercial opportunities give you. Is now we're talking about a substantial amount of money. Who doesn't want to have $234,000? Right? The reason why we didn't go on this deal is because we felt that the amount of work we would need to take on for this needs to be a great value where it's going to give us a great return. But we're not investing that hundred forty-one thousand dollars, Lewis, and I don't want to. I can't give Lou a good enough return if we're paying ourselves as well. I want to give Lou a great return. I want to give Lou at least you know fifteen percent. 
But if I'm giving you 15%, does that leave us enough money for us to do this deal? You know what? We felt our, our resources were best used elsewhere. Our resources were best used That's why we skipped on this deal. But that doesn't make it a bad deal. You can appreciate how this becomes a really good deal. And when you multiply those numbers from a sixplex to a 20plex to a 100plex, and your lenders aren't investing 141,000, they're investing a million or two million, and those lenders are out there and they want it, right? And they're getting equity on the deal, so they're okay with getting your 8% interest right away because they've got equity on the deal. They're getting 75% of the money up on when it sells after. They're happy. But then at that point there, those numbers make more sense for you because the reality is, you know, for the amount of work you put in when you got proper property management company, you've got a good contractor involved, there, you know, it's worth the while for us. So we're happy with giving, you know, eight percent, seven percent. Hard to get ten percent in this market here. Really hard. Would um, this be like a syndication that you're doing? About one hundred forty-one thousand, probably not. Right? So, so it, it would be an no, it, sir, be. it would be a syndication in the sense that it is a partnership. We because both own the property. I heard you saying that you're going to give some equity. So it is a syndication in that case, absolutely. It's not a syndication where we get multiple uh, lenders involved. We would most likely get one lender involved only, but it would be a joint venture partner. Yes, yeah, so it would be together we own a new company name, definitely like that. On uh, this property here, it's a little difficult because it's you know it's not as big for property. I'd like to deal with 20 plexes or more, where what you do is you say, hey Lou, you want in on this one? We're going to create a, a company that specifically owns that. You let's say you're going to go invest 750,000. I'll put in 50,000, 100,000 dollars, and I found the deal. You're going to take on. You're going to say maybe you will own about 60, 70, 65 to 70 percent of the equity, right? And I'm going to own the right the remainder, and some of there's maybe an eight percent cash on cash at the moment, right? You look at the numbers as well. It's not a great return off of that. I can put my money elsewhere up front. It's upon the sale or the refinance that that's where all of a sudden it's really a value for you to get into. So yes, it would be definitely a syndication 